which went before on thee, that thou by them might. Can you give me another translation, please? Give me another. If you have NLT or or, or ASV or ESV rather, give me one of those, please. Hallelujah. Can we read this together? Hallelujah. I want you to pray for yourself quickly this morning and say, Lord, I receive strength and boldness to fight to win in 2023. Go ahead and begin to pray for yourself. Talk mouth this morning and pray for yourself. Talk your mouth this morning and pray for yourself that I receive the strength, the grace to fight to win in 2023. I receive the grace, the strength to fight to win in 2023. I am no longer living in fear. Fear is no part of my life anymore. I no longer live in fear. I receive the grace to fight to win in this year. In the name of Jesus. I receive the grace to fight to win this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. I receive the grace to fight to win this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, I pray that you please speak through me this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, please break these words into pieces this morning. Let it fit into every heart here this morning. Including those online in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Come on, sit like a king this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First King chapter 19. First King chapter 19. I'm going to read from verses 1 to 4. First King chapter 19. And he had told Je Jezebel all that Elijah had done. So how he had executed all the prophets with his verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me do to her not me and more also if i do not make your if she does not not me praise the lord as one of them by tomorrow about this time verse 3 and when he saw that when elijah saw that he arose and ran for his life and then went to beersheba which belongs to judah and left his servant there verse 4 but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said it is enough now lord take his life for he was no better than his fathers i pray for you that everything that has threatened you up to this point this morning they disappear from me in the name of jesus Amen. i pray for you this morning everything that has made you to leave your responsibilities Everything that has made you to neglect your responsibilities. The people that are looking up to you, you have neglected them. This morning, the Lord will fight for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, this was Elijah here. He had just, God has just walked through him. We've been talking since the beginning of January about it is time for us to walk. God has just walked through this man. But he refused to ride on his victories. He refused to ride on his victory. He refused to ride on his victory. And because he refused to, I want to let you know something this morning. You need to start celebrating your small, small victories. Your small, small miracles. If you refuse to, I mean, to celebrate your small miracles, you are giving an opportunity, an occasion for the enemy to attack you. That's what you're doing. That is what you are doing. Because if you don't celebrate your small, small miracles, you don't celebrate your small, small breakthroughs, then you are simply telling God that you have done nothing for me. That's what you are saying. And if that is what you are saying, then God himself, you know, is just away from you or you are away from God, whichever one it is. So this morning, you need to begin to celebrate those small, small miracles, those small, small victories. Because when you do that, you are calling for more victories for yourself. So imagine if Elijah tried to celebrate what God has just done through him. So just 
one person. It was a time for him to actually become an, the most important person in the land. After all that he has done. But he allowed just another person to threaten him. And he ran from it for his life. He became depressed. He became discouraged. And he wanted to die immediately. He wanted to die. I mean, we read that scripture last week, so I don't need to go back into them. We saw how Elijah, how he, he, he prayed and rain fell. I mean, when rain fell on, on, on I mean, uh, fire came rather, you know, on the altar that he set against that of the ba prophet of Baal. He did a lot of things. He prayed for the rain to come. Rain came. But because he did not celebrate in small, small miracles, so to speak, he allowed the enemy to attack. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So this year, you are going to face your giant this year. And you are going to conquer them this year. You are going to face your fears this year. And you are going to conquer them this year. Hallelujah. Everything that has reduced you to putting yourself in a box. Everything that has reduced you to living all the things that you, are, you should be responsible for. Everything that is making you to run away from your responsibility. This year, you will conquer them in the name of Jesus. But learn to celebrate your small, small miracles. Giants are meant to be stepping stones for us. They are not meant to crush you. You are meant to crush them. You are meant to crush your fears. Crush your fears. Let me tell somebody, say, crush your fears this morning. Giants are meant to be stepping stones. For us. Let me tell you something. Without a battle, there can't be a victory. If you don't have any battle to fight, then how can you declare victory? You declare a victory because you have won a battle. So, stop running away from your battles. Face them. Face them. Everything that is bringing fear into your heart. Face them. Everything that is making you to fidget. Face them. Because it is when you face them and you crush them, that's when you can declare victory. Have you ever seen somebody that never went to war and he says, I'm victorious? From what? From what? So when you run away from your battles, this is what it does to you. When you run away from your, your giant, it brings you to a state of retrogression. Or at best, a state of stagnancy. Such person cannot move forward. You are just at a spot. Of course, there's no record of victory. There can't be any record of victory or success. It withholds your testimony. You know, when you are supposed to share those small, small ones that God has done for you, so that heavens can come again for you to do more, when you refuse to share them and you allow the enemy to attack, what do they do? They withhold your testimony. The testimony that could have been a blessing to another person. And the heavens will rejoice. And they say, oh, thank God for this son. Thank God for this daughter. And they will be able to do more for you. But you think that is so small for you to share. Hallelujah. If you run away from your battle, if you refuse to celebrate your small, small victory, it brings about discouragement. And like this guy, Elijah, it brings depression. It brings depression. We just read in the last chapter, the hand of God came upon Elijah. How can somebody that the hand of God just came upon? And another woman would threaten that person. And he, and he would run away. What? What did he do with the hand of God that came upon him? So the hand of God is upon you this year. But do you know you can make it irrelevant? I pray that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So face your giant this year. Face your fears this year. And let me tell you something. It's not, a, it's not about what you see. It's about what is on the inside of you. It's about... You remember 10 of the 12 spies... Numbers chapter 13 from verse 31. Numbers 13, 31. Let me put it on the screen, please. Numbers 13, 31. Ten of the twelve spies that, you know, went to spy the, the, this land. Ten of them came back by the things that they saw. 
But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. You are able to go up in Jesus' name. Amen. The, next, the next one, please. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that divorced its inhabitants. That was not true. They even started lying. Hallelujah. They were lying because they wanted to justify their stand. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. 33, please. There we saw the giant, the descendant of Anak, came from, that came from giant. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Next one. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. Let me tell you something. It's better you stop crying. Stop wetting your pillow. It will not bring any solution. Face your fears. Face your giant. Stay in that scriptures. Face your fears. Face your giant. Complaining will not bring any solution. Complaining will not bring any solution. So all the, they lifted up their voices and cried and the people wept that night. The next one. Hallelujah. Okay. No, let's, let's stop here. Praise the Lord. So it's not about what you see. It's not about what you hear. It's about what is on the inside of you. Because some of us sometimes want to fight based on what we see. We forget about the God Almighty that is on the inside of us. Let's look at the story of another guy. First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17 45 to 46. First Samuel 17. Then David said to the Philistine, come to me with a sword. These are the things that David could see with the man. You come with, to me with sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. Can we read the next line together, everybody? But I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you. In, so it's not about what you see. It's about what is on the inside of you. How many of us are born again in this place this morning? You are born again. Let me be bold about it now if you are born again. You know, people come to church. Yet some people are not born again. And I pray that God will reach out to such people in the name of Jesus. Jesus with me with all these things but I come to you in the name of the Lord so it doesn't matter what your situation presents they are just external they are external you have to start looking inward to be able to fight this year so that you can fight and win because this year you carry Jesus Jesus is the power of God Jesus is the wisdom of God when you have power and wisdom you are as good you are good already because the power helps you to conquer. When you see things that are confusing, the wisdom comes through for you. You carry that on the inside of you. You have Jesus on the inside. Hallelujah. Please put me on the piano, please. I feel like singing, actually. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So, it doesn't matter what the situation presents to you. What matters is the God, Jesus, that you carry inside. Because with him, you can win any battle. With him, you can win any battle. Verse 47 of that scripture. Verse 47. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. So God does not save with those things that that person is coming to you with, I mean, against you with. God does not save with those things that terrifies you already. God doesn't save with those things that are putting you in fear already. Hallelujah. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. I want you to begin to declare right there on your seat that all my fears, I have you in my hands this morning. I begin to cross you in the name of God. Begin to pray for yourself. I cross my fears this year. Because this year you have to fight to win. You have to walk. You have to walk and receive the rewards of your work this year. 
You have to walk and move to the le- next level that God has for you. You have to walk and enter into the level and the realm that God has for you. So begin to cross your fears this morning. Because it's not about what that situation presents. It's not about what you see. It's not about what you hear. It's not about what you feel. It's about the name of God that is on you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See on the major keys. On the major keys, please. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, it's, God doesn't save people with physical things. He doesn't save with physical things. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I up Zechariah chapter 4. For I am a of God. The Bible says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power. It is nothing by what you see. It's not by what you can see. It's not by what you can feel. It's not they are telling you somebody is. It's not about that. Hallelujah. But by my spirit, says the Lord, where is the spirit of God? Come on now. Where is the spirit? And it is that that God will win the battle for you. The next verse, verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain? Can you say this morning, pray with this scripture. So who are you? Whatever is your fear this year, can you say to that fear, who are you? Come on, go ahead this morning. Come on, go ahead. that with a shout of grace grace come on sound Jesus oh that cuts you honest I say sound Jesus because this year you are facing your giant and you are winning in the mighty name of Jesus so don't pull back even when it looks as if the battle is getting fierce or get it stronger. Shout the name of Jesus. You have him. He will come to your rescue. He will fight for you. And you will win. But you need to understand first. That he does not need any material. He doesn't need anything from you. He needs you to reach out to him. To help you. And he will surely come for you. He will come for you. So don't pull back. What do you do? Run towards that fear. Ha! I hope I'm talking to somebody. Run towards that fear. This morning. This month. This year. Run towards that fear. Because it's only going to keep you where you have been. Run towards the fear. Let's look at what David did. Let's go back to 1 Samuel 17, 48. Don't pull back. First Samuel 17, 48. Look at it. So it was when Philistine arose and came and drew nearer to meet David that David hurried and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. I want some people to spiritually demo some things this morning. Can you run towards your fear this morning? Walk towards your fear. Demonstrate his speaking tongues this morning. Walk towards your fear this morning. Run towards your fear. Cross your fear this morning. What we are doing may not make sense to some people. You know, these past three weeks, I've been hearing testimonies. God has been doing a lot of things. And this is what God is saying to you this morning. Walk towards your fear. Hurriedly move towards your fear. Cross your fear this morning. People have told you that where you are, that, that you cannot get this, you cannot get that, and you are nursing that fear in your mind, and it's keeping you at a spot. Walk towards your fear this morning. 
They told you you cannot get job. You cannot do this in the same place. People are getting jobs with the government. People are getting private jobs. Students are getting full-time jobs. But because of what they've told you, you are living your life in fear. Walk towards your fear this morning. Oh, I hope somebody will take advantage of this this time this morning. Walk towards your fear this morning. Walk towards your fear this morning. They say you cannot get accommodation and you are living your life as a nobody. Walk towards your fear this morning. Cross your fear this morning. They say you will never make it and you are sitting down there this morning. Walk towards your fear this morning. Walk towards your fear this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's have our seat briefly. You walk towards the giant. You walk, you confront the fear. Confront the giant. Confront the giant. You don't just confront the giant. You know, David, there's a story about David. David was an Ill illegitimate child. <laughs> he was, but he was still the one that delivered not just his family, the old children of Israel. So it does not matter uh, who, what your number is in your family or whatever they've said about you. You know, I, I, I was, I think about three weeks ago, I was, even if there's an evil prophecy, about you. You know you can. You can shave it off. You can shave it away. You don't agree with it. That evil prophecy becomes a giant. You face it and say, no, you will never happen to me. You will never happen to me. And it won't happen to you. Praise the Lord. So, you, it's not just about confronting your giant. You make sure that you kill it. Kill the giant. Kill the fear. Verse 49. Verse 49. Hallelujah. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and he struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank in his forehead and fell on his face to the earth. Next one. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no, you know that giants, they don't die easily. <laughs> they don't die easily. And killed him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. So, you have to make sure this year that you kill your giant. Don't think that because you conquered the giant just temporarily, and you think that will be over. You stay and kill, kill the giant. Let me tell your neighbor, say, kill the fear. Kill it. Say to that person, kill it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at what he did. Therefore, David ran and stood over the Philistine. How somebody will stand over the giant this morning? Stand over your giant. Come on. Stand over your giant this morning. Took his sword and drew it out of his sheet and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistine saw that their champion was dead, after David brought out the sword, Removed the head. That's, that was when they knew that now the giant was dead. The stone that hit the giant probably just made the giant to fall down. Of course, became powerless. And But he had to make sure that what? He killed the giant. Hallelujah. Amen. Esther said in Esther chapter 4 verse 16. He said, if I perish, I perish. I'm facing this giant. Because what is the, what is the point anyways? Something is not allowing you, allowing you to move forward. Is it not better you face it so you can move? Hallelujah. I want you to pray and say, Lord, I know I have your power on the inside of me. Help me to realize how much I carry. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Help me to realize how much I carry. Help me to realize how much I carry. I am leaving this position. I am I'm not going to be in this position. I am not going to be in this position. I am leaving this position. Pray for yourself this morning. 
Esther said, if I perish, I perish. You have God on the inside of you. Face it. Face the giant. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's have our seat. I'm rounding off now. Let's just read that scripture. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me so you know that it's not going to be by what you see. It's about you use the things you don't see to defeat the things that you see. That's why we are fasting and praying at this moment. I hope somebody will take an advantage of that. Fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Did she perish? No, she didn't perish. So that giant cannot kill you actually. That fear cannot do anything to you. It's just trying to keep you at the same spot. That giant cannot kill you. With God on the inside of you, your very first tool is praise. I said that in the beginning. Celebrate God for your little, little miracles. Don't carry a mind of ingratitude. When you cannot celebrate your small, small miracles, there's no way God will do more for you. Be satisfied. Be content with what you have, with what God has done for you. That's the starting point. The song says, uh, miracles are miracles. A little million miracles. One, two, three, four. I can even count more. Part of the, part of the song says, the mother used to tell her they should celebrate God because they have food on their table. How many of us just take it for granted? We eat every day. It's like it's normal to us. Nobody is feeding you. Nobody forces you. You don't have tubes passed on the inside of you to eat, to feed. Hallelujah. There was a time that a family sent for me. That was many years ago in Nigeria. Because according to the testimony, the person was in coma and then one of the songs that God helped me to do at the time, that's the song the person was hearing in the spirit and she sang song out. And I was so touched with that testimony. So I left Akure where I was. I traveled to Lagos immediately. I was with one of my daughters in, on campus in those days. I traveled to Lagos to see this person. I saw tubes all around this person. But I thank God because the person is living, she's fine, she's, she's healthy today. Glory be to Jesus. Celebrate God. If you have seen things, I've seen a lot of things as a pastor. We pray for people, we see situations. But God is faithful to you. That's why I always tell people, I'm not, I'm not one of those pastors that will say, ah, somebody had an accident yesterday. You now see, you know some churches. That's why you now see voice, people's voice will now rise. Ah, thank God it's not me. Why don't you think and look deep first and thank God for you? Without, without thanking God based on the disadvantages of other people. Celebrate your little wins. Celebrate your miracles. Have understanding when it comes to thanksgiving. Victory begat victory. Hallelujah. The book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3. Verse 14 to 17. I'm rounding up. Zephaniah. Imagine if Elijah took time to praise God. If he took time to celebrate God. I'm very sure the story would have been different. Verse 14 says, Oh, sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Zion. The Lord has taken away your judgment. He has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. In the name of Jesus. 
In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear Zion, let not your hands be weak. Verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. When you are filled with praise. When you are filled with thanksgiving. When you are filled with gratitude. Some of us, what is disturbing us is that we want to have everything at the same time. That's why we are not grateful. So you don't take time to celebrate the little one that you have. Lastly, this morning, let's go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy. This charge I commit to you. Put your name there this morning. This charge I commit to you. According to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, what do you do? You fight. You fight. By them, you fight. Let's rise to our feet this morning. You unraveled me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance. Let's sing the song. From my enemies Till all my fears are I'm gone I'm no longer I'm no longer A slave to fear For I am a child I am a child 